I work on cells of the immune system um, called, t uh, called lymphocytes and these are white blood cells that we all have travelling through our body and they're really important to fight um, infections. So they uh, kill virus infected cells and they also have the ability to kill cancer cells. And they do this by recognising them through very specific modes of recognition and then basically throwing grenades at the target and making the, making the target blow up essentially. So for years now I've been looking at that process, so you know, how do they throw the grenades, how do they choose their, their enemies, um, what kind of weapons do they throw, um, and now I'm looking at you know, their ability to become serial killers, because of course if you're uh, designing a vaccine or if you want a really efficient immune response, one killer and one target's not very efficient, you want one killer to be able to take out loads of targets, and to do that they need to be able to deliver their lethal hit and detach. So, um, look, really the Faculty of Medicine for me was a really obvious choice. I'd always um, had a deep interest in infection and immunity and understanding the way the bodies work. And so for me, um, you know, choosing the Faculty of Medicine was an easy and obvious step for me. Um, I've majored in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology and wanted to then do my PhD in Immunology. So, um, yeah, it worked out really well. <laughs> So for me, to, for me to study at university, that meant moving away from my family, like a lot of people have to do. Um, and I had to leave the family home and move down to the big city. And at that time, Melbourne University was a very scary place. I mean, it had a, like a 7-Eleven and a Donut King. It was like a city within a city. So for me, that was scary. And it was also tough financially because I wasn't, you know, my parents, um, like many of their generation, left school at the age of 15 and had no you know, qualifications. They didn't have any money to give me and to help me out so yeah like like most people had to rent a little house and you know and uh, find a housemate and you know but that's kind of half the fun as well I think you know so I tell my students now that, that your education um, is more broad than just you know what, what you're learning in the classroom and it to me a broad education is also every book you read every conversation you have or you know, the, the conversations you have with the really interesting people that you meet at university, it's part of the whole experience and it's ongoing forever. So I guess as far as leadership is concerned, I think it's absolutely critical um, for anyone, whether you're in science or medicine or history or politics or art or plumbing, whatever, it, whatever your specialty is, to seek out good mentors. And, um, you know, and I have... I have uh, a handful of very good mentors in my life, both that are both work in the science field and some that don't work in the science field. And I, I go to them for, for advice from time to time for various things. And um, it's really critical to have mentors that will, you know, that will give you feedback and really evaluate you critically um, without taking offence because, it, you know, it's really the way to become a better person, both professionally and personally. Is if you can have some trusted mentors guiding you through that process and helping you navigate your way. So I've been very lucky in that sense that I've always had good mentors myself, and because I believe it is such an important part of the professional journey, um, you know, that's what I tell my students now: is that go and seek out mentors. You know, you will find that people are very. Um, generous with their time you know if you want to be a lawyer go and find out who's the best criminal lawyer if that's what you want to do go and talk ask them for five minutes of their time buy them a cup of coffee find out about their day how they got there you know I guess to sum up my PhD in five words which is really hard it would definitely be uh, educational which is but I, I learned a lot. It was an amazing experience. I was surrounded by very supportive teams. I was very lucky in that way. It was um, challenging. You know, it's not all easy. It was very late nights in the lab and lots of hard work. But it was fun because I got to travel and see places I had never seen before and go to conferences and meet people I otherwise wouldn't have met. And I was surrounded by a fantastic team of students and the faculty and we had a lot of fun together going skiing at Mount Buller, staying at the Melbourne University Lodge um, and getting involved in the committees. And it was empowering because it really made me realise that I want to be a scientist when I grow up and, you know, wow, sort of this is the start of the rest of my life in a lot of ways. 
um, and it allowed me to think more broadly about what, yeah, what I wanted to do and not just about my science but sort of where that fits in the whole scheme of things professionally and getting involved in other activities like lecturing and teaching and mentoring and getting involved in various um, programs and things that I do. So it's been empowering, it's been fun. <laughs>